hello everyone today in this video we'll be discussing the fifth module of automata and here are some topics uh, which you need to know from this module so it's a very short module and we'll be going through it uh, by using some examples and uh, there is a problem here post correspondence problem which we'll be discussing by a few examples so before starting if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so if you suppose that you went to a chocolate factory and there are two types of chocolate uh, chocolate x and chocolate y so uh, what you're gonna do at that time is you'll be deciding which one to buy right in the same way there is a turing machine here and uh, the turing machine will be deciding if the problem is going to end or not end okay so that is the uh, thing be, uh, behind uh, decidability so uh, whichever language is uh, means you can say with certainty that it is uh, going to end that is uh, decidable if it's not it's undecidable okay so if they ask you in the exam you have to write the definitions as follows you can go through it so that's not the same thing i said and uh, here you will be doing the uh, yes or no question uh, and uh, if it's decidable it's called as decidable else it's called as undecidable okay that was the first topic which you needed to know the second one is the recursive and recursively enumerable okay so what is the difference between both is that in the recursive language it should uh, read and uh, means it should read the input and after that it should reach the final state and halt okay that is the recursive language and if this language is designed using a turing machine that is called as a recursively enumerable language okay the third one uh, is the uh, halting problem and after that we will discuss the uh, post correspondence problem halting problem means that uh, the same thing what i discussed before if there is an input w on a turing machine if it's uh, yes or no means if it halts or not so if we can say with certainty that it uh, halts it's uh, means um, that is a decidable language right so uh, we'll be using a technique called reduction technique to decide if it's um, uh, halting or not okay so what we do is uh, suppose that there is a um, problem a and it is reducible to b okay and if b is uh, decidable that means obviously a is also decidable if b is undecidable a will also be undecidable so what we are doing is we are just simplifying a into b and then deciding on b if it's um, uh, halting or not okay Th that is known as reduction technique so uh, halting problem is solved using reduction technique and uh, th there is a theorem here if they ask the theorem in the exam you have to do this uh, do the same thing here so the uh, theorem is that m comma w m is the turing machine and w is the input string the turing machine m halts on input w is undecidable so we can't say for sure that if uh, input string is um, means if it's uh, ending or not okay if it's halting or not we can't say for sure uh, every time okay so how do we approach this um, uh, theorem is that firstly we'll assume that halt tm is decidable and uh, then we get a contradiction okay so halt tm is decidable if halt tm is decidable uh, that means it ends okay or it halts after a certain amount of time so let uh, there we are considering two machines m1 and m2 okay remember this we are considering two machines m1 and m2 in the first uh, case what we'll do is if m2 uh, does not accept if it rejects any string mw at that time m2 will also reject if m1 accepts then after a certain amount of time uh, there should be a state defined uh, due to which the uh, machine gets halt okay means if it accepts a string like a w at that time it should continue and go on until uh, it reaches the ending state so before it reaches the ending state there is a transition okay the transition is not yet uh, defined but there might be a transition there might not be a transition so if m2 m1 accepts m2 will also accept okay so here uh, there is a contradiction why because in the first case m1 accepts then uh, m2 will also accept in the second case m1 uh, just accepted the first string okay first string was accepted but it went on till uh, it uh, finds a transition which reaches the halt state but we are not sure whether uh, we will reach this transition or not but on the other hand m1 has accepted the first string m2 will accept the whole string so there is a contradiction here m2 is accepting but uh, we are not sure it might reject also means it's uh, uh, there is no certainty that if m1 has accepted the first string the other strings will also be accepted okay so there is a contradiction you have to explain that uh, same thing and therefore since there is a contradiction the language uh, which is accepted by m2 is undecidable okay among the two uh, two problem types so the first one is over the halting problem the second one is the post correspondence problem so let's uh, discuss what is uh, post correspondence problem so uh, in post correspondence problem suppose that uh, you have two lists here like a and b and here you have the items in it okay means the first uh, list has three items a a b b a b b second list has uh, three items a a b b a and b so what is your task is that you have to find a sequence such that the final string will be same 
I will be explaining this uh, directly then after that you will get to know how to approach this one okay in the exam they will give you these two things and you have to uh, give the answer in this way okay means the index numbers so what do these index uh, numbers represent suppose that I took uh, the first one is 1 okay so 1 what is here 1 AA so I wrote here as AA okay and uh, in the second one for uh, 1 it is AAB so I wrote here AAB okay and then the second uh, number is 2 so firstly I will check if AA is equal to AAB or not it's not equal so therefore what I will do I will go for the next one 2 BB I wrote here BB BA I wrote here BA so uh, now let me check AABB or AABBA both are equal no it's not equal so I have to move further then here the next uh, um, sequence is 1 so again I will write AA and AAB so I wrote here AA I wrote here AAB okay then I will check if it's same or not this one and this one is it same no it's not same so what I have to do I have to move further then the last one is 3 so if I take 3 it will be ABB I'll write here ABB and I'll write here B so now let me see if the string is same or not consider the whole string this one and this one do I get the same strings now yes these two are the same strings now so my answer is 1 2 1 3 okay so that's how we approach this question let's uh, discuss another example here x and y are defined as b b a b cube b cube means uh, b repeated three times okay b a and uh, b cube b a and a okay so if you uh, if you see uh, how can we start the question okay firstly you have to see how to start the question if you take one two or three if you take one you have to take uh, this both if you take two you have to take uh, this both if you uh, if you take three you have to take this both now obviously I can't take 3 because it will start from BA it will start from A then it will be never be equal right because the first one only is uh, different so I can't start from here then next one uh, I can either start from here or here okay that doesn't matter so um, in this case I'll be starting from um, 2 you have to do trail and error method and then only you'll get the answer okay so if I start from 2 I'll, I'll write here BA BBB okay and uh, obviously I have to write the second one for y also so it will be ba then I can see ba is here ba is here then three b's are here so obviously I need to get three b's here right how can I get three b in y b cube so right here b cube this is the first one so uh, corresponding to that in x also I'll write b okay so I'll write this b here so this one is, was done for two this one for, uh, this one is done for one then uh, now I'll check uh, what is the status I have reached till here and uh, I am reached till here so what is the difference the difference start from here one extra b is here and that extra b is not present here rest all uh, before that the string is same see the string is same uh, till this point now how, how can I get extra b in y now um, I can't get one a single b so therefore what I have to do is I have to get uh, go, uh, uh, go with b cube to get three b's and I'll get one b here so that one b is written here and three b's are written here now let me see what is the status here how many b's i have six b's i have here how many b's i have i have five b's okay means i am just considering this one five b's are here here six b's are there now what can i do to add one extra b here one extra b can be added here but uh, if i do that i'll get three more b's here which is wrong answer second possibility is that if i add b a b cube like b a b cube here i'll just get b a uh, uh, i mean here so, so what I mean is um, B A B cube will be added here B A B cube and uh, corresponding to that I'll just add B A here so again it will be unequal so um, what can I do I'll uh, check for the third option in the third option if I add B A here I'll get six B's along with A and corresponding to that I'll just get one A here already six B's are here and one A I'll get I'll get the same string on the both the sides right so uh, in that way you have to check and write the final answer that's what uh, PCP is and uh, uh, in this question we have to prove that it has no solution how can we prove that uh, if you observe here it is 0 1 1 1 corresponding to that I should take uh, 0 1 uh, 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 1 so whenever I take a, a string from here at that time I get the double string here right so it can never be equal length will never be equal whatever I take from here if I take one it will be one one if I take then uh, one one it will be one 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 like that the string will never be uh, of equal length and therefore the uh, PCP has no solution right so that is all uh, what they will be asking you in the exam you have to write the PCP and uh, they will be giving you the 
uh, post correspondence problem and you have to write the means uh, which sequence gives the uh, equal strings okay you have to just write that moving on we have the next um, topic which is uh, growth rate and inside that we have p and n p class okay so growth rate is nothing but the um, what is the whenever there is a, a function defined how much time it takes okay so uh, suppose that let's uh, take an example here you can go through the theorem later and uh, this compulsory for you to write okay so uh, i'll explain you that using this example here suppose that f of n is given as this one now uh, you tell me what is the order of this um, function here it is n cube here it is n square here it is n here it is n power 0 okay so the order is n cube so how can i say for sure that uh, if i take some input like 5 n cube whatever uh, value i put for n it will be always greater than this one how can i say for uh, sure see suppose that this is 4 n cube here okay let's keep it as such here then the next one is 5 n square plus 7 n plus 3 5 n square is less than um, n cube right 5 n square is obviously less than n cube for uh, value suppose like 10 i'll start from 10 11 12 like that i can start okay then uh, what all values i put for n square it will al uh, always be less than uh, n cube right same thing goes for 7n also so instead of this one if i write here 7n that will also be less than n cube 3 will also be less than n cube so these all things like it will be less than n cube here also n cube here also n cube if i add them up and add with uh, 4n cube it will be 7n cube right so for 7n cube whatever value i put for n here greater than uh, 10 it will always be lesser so in which range it is lying it is lying in the range of n cube therefore uh, the order of the function is n cube okay o of n cube the same thing is explained here in theory also you can go through it f of n is equal to o of g n g n is uh, like 7 n cube which i took here and f of n is that uh, 4 n square whatever the uh, question was given okay so f of n is less than or equal to c uh, g of n c is nothing but um, 7 i took g of n is n cube so in that we can prove that for all the uh, n greater than n naught n naught i took as 10 and uh, in this case we can say that f is in the order of g okay or f is big o of g so that's all what you have to write in the growth of uh, growth rate of function just uh, write the definition and explain it using an example okay moving on we have the two things p and np class p means polynomial time ticking polynomial time ticking means if i have a for loop here double for loop at that time how much time it will take if it runs n times here if it runs n times here n times it is running n times that means n square time it is taking whatever the number is uh, raised that is the uh, polynomial time taking okay that class of algorithms is known as polynomial class uh, polynomial class algorithms okay the second is the exponential time taking algorithms uh, like uh, in the um, some problems are there right like uh, traveling salesman problem and all they uh, take the polynomial time right so that is the uh, and in backtracking uh, backtracking also they uh, they take the polynomial time so those uh, types of problems uh, come under the uh, class of uh, NP, which is non-deterministic uh, polynomial time-taking algorithms. Also, uh, actually, those are de uh, deterministic. Non-deterministic means we, ha we don't have a correct uh, algorithm uh, for it yet, but uh, we know the approach. Okay. So that's all uh, what you have to explain uh, in the P and NP class. And moving on, uh, the next question is about quantum computing. So quantum computing is uh, just that uh, we'll have a computer which is built using the quantum circuits and uh, quantum gates to carry out manipulation of quantum information one thing you need to know is that in digital computers we use 0 and 1 that is binary states in quantum computer we use uh, qubits instead of bits we will use qubits that is defined as this function here okay so here you have two things alpha and beta that is the probabilities of getting a 0 and 1 okay so uh, the qubit can be represented as two possible states 0 and 1 okay so since there are probabilities involved, it can be like 50% 0, 50% uh, 50 1, 60% 0, 40% 1. So there are infinite uh, possibilities of uh, how much percent 0 is there, how much percent 1 is there. So it has an infinite uh, number of uh, qubit states. Okay, And the probability should uh, satisfy the following condition, a squ alpha square plus beta square is equal to 1. Okay, The 0 and 1 which you can see are known as uh, computational basis states and uh, this one, this is the function which is defined is known as superposition and the whole function is called as quantum state. Okay, And there are multiple qubits which can be defined in a similar way like uh, alpha, like uh, if you have your alpha and uh, here you will have beta for 1 and uh, you will have 0, 1 for uh, gamma and uh, so on. Okay, 
so this is the whole state is known as a quantum state and multiple qubits can also be defined okay but one thing you need to keep in mind is that only 0 and 1 will be there the combination will be there but uh, no other bits uh, no other uh, symbols other than 0 and 1 will be used only 0 and 1 okay and uh, quantum states cannot be determined on observation uh, we get a 0 with a probability alpha square and 1 with a probability beta square okay but in the digital computer we can say for sure that 100% is 0 or 100% is 1 okay so just write the definition of uh, quantum computing and explain the following um, points okay so the last question is about the church uh, turing thesis here any state uh, it is stated as any algorithm procedure that can be carried out by human or a team of human being or a computer can be uh, carried out by some turing machine okay so this is the algorithm this is the statement of uh, the uh, church turing thesis in other words there is an effective procedure to solve a decision problem uh, p only if there is a tm that accepts yes for uh, strings belonging to p and does not accept for string does not belonging to p okay so there is a turing machine it accepts uh, w if it belongs to p and does not accept if it uh, does not belong to p at that time only it is called as effective uh, means uh, there is a, a solution to the decision problem okay and uh, uh, so as of now the most uh, powerful uh, machine we have for uh, in the domain of automata is the turing machine okay so that's what the church has concluded that it is unable uh, that uh, they are unable to construct the uh, models of computation that are more powerful than the existing ones means uh, church was a scientist and uh, he and his team members were unable to uh, construct a, a model of computer more powerful than the existing one okay so since the church uh, thesis is closely related to the Turing's thesis, it talks about the Turing's thesis. It is also known as uh, church Turing thesis. Okay. So that's all basically what you need to know in the module 5 and uh, make sure you go through these concepts uh, very thoroughly. And uh, that's it for this video and thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.